We will thrive. And namaste just means the light in me sees, honors, and values the light in you. And I'm really excited to be here today. And it's perfect, actually, that Germany is about to head to bed because eye yoga is perfect to reduce eye strain before you go to bed. Most of us are on our phones and our computers all day long. So doing a little eye yoga before you go to bed is perfect. So I'm actually going to start the session with eye yoga so you don't need a mat and you don't need yoga clothes. And this is one of the most important things because as we get into talking about emotional health, the number one thing that we're experiencing collectively is stress. Stress on top of stress on top of stress. So family stress, personal stress, community stress, worldwide stress. And so I yoga at least tones down that stress just a little bit by releasing eye strain from being on your phone and computer and digesting all this information. So, um, and I know you've had a great day already. So let's just take a moment for ourselves to connect with our breath and do a little eye yoga. So sit in a comfortable position. If sitting on the ground like I'm sitting is uncomfortable for you, you can grab a book or a pillow or something to sit on to release the pressure from your knees. Take a moment to close your eyes. Take a deep inhale and sigh it out. Exhale. Another deep inhale and sigh it out. Exhale. Another deep inhale. Bring your shoulders to your ears and exhale. Shoulders back down and around. Another deep inhale. Shoulders to your ears and exhale. Bring those shoulders back down and around. Last time, shoulders to your ears. And exhale back down in a room. Now with your eyes closed, look down, all the way down, as far as you can down. And you'll start feeling that release in your eyes from the TV, from the phone, from the just being awake all day. And now look to the right as far as you can right. So the eyes are sealed and you're just looking to the right. And then look up as far as you can up, all the way up. And then look to the left, all the way to the left, as far as you can to the left. And then look down, all the way down, as far as you can down. We're gonna reverse directions. Look at the bottom left-hand corner. You're gonna get all the crevices and creases of the eyes and just, this, this is really, massaging the eyeballs on the back of the eyelids. Now look up at the upper left-hand corner and you'll feel that release. You can even windshield wipe your eyes, like looking up at the left-hand corner, but moving your eyes a little bit up and a little bit down. And now look over to the upper right-hand corner. Again, your head stays still, just using your eyes, allowing your eyes to get that stretch, to get that yoga. Take a deep inhale. And exhale, look at the bottom right-hand corner. Keeping the shoulders relaxed away from the ears, lifting the heart. And now let's create circles. So big circles clockwise. And then big circles counterclockwise. Beautiful. And now look right, left, left, right. Zigzags all the way up to the top of your eye sockets. And then all the way down to the bottom. And now look up and down, up and down, all the way to the right. And up and down, up and down, all the way to the left. Beautiful. And then slowly blink your eyes open and rub your hands together. Place your fingertips on your eyelids and gently massage anywhere else you feel any tension in your eyes. Take a deep inhale. And exhale, sigh it out as you just massage out that stress and tension.
and then slowly relax down. All right. Well, I hope your eyes feel more relaxed. I know mine do. It feels absolutely amazing. So you can do that anytime you've been looking at your phone or your computer for more than 30 minutes. You wanna make sure you have that release. You wanna make sure that you're giving your eyes a break so that you can be um, your best at whatever you're paying attention to. Also highly recommend blue light blockers if you have those glasses that are blocking the blue light that's coming in from your computer or your, your phone that's also going to help reduce eye strain and stress in the eyes. And so now let's go into talking about emotional health. So emotional health is really important, especially right now. Uh, one of the things that I myself do and a lot of people do, especially when things are already hot and already um, confusing and uncertain, is avoidance. A lot of times we avoid conflict. We avoid people. We avoid those conversations that are just going to give us the headache. But when we talk about mindfulness, it's about making a decision, not avoiding, not letting things just hang out there, but taking this opportunity to lean into love. And you lean into love by addressing your fear. I wrote a book, Let Your Fears Make You Fierce. And fierceness just means living unapologetically, mentally, spiritually, and physically your truth, your soul. And avoiding, it's hard to do that because you're not doing the work to really lean into that place where you're having fear. So when it comes to emotional health, the first thing that you want to do, the first step, and you might want to write these down, it's going to be really quick and simple. But the first step is acknowledgement. Acknowledge where the pain is. Acknowledge where the fear is. Acknowledge where the hurt is, whether it be with yourself, someone else or just your frustrations with humanity in general. I highly recommend having a journal where you can write things down or you can write things down in the notes in your phone. So whatever you do, just start writing down and just making sure that you are mindful of how you're feeling and that you're able to translate how you're feeling with your loved ones. And that starts with Addressing it yourself, writing things down, checking in, expressing your emotions. And if you're not a writer, you can also create a video. I have friends that have video journals. And so basically they have a video and they just record themselves. And in that recording, they just focus on just unapologetically saying exactly how they feel and with no walls bared. So just write everything out. It's a way to release stress and trauma from your body. So just write out exactly how you feel. And then forgiveness. Step number two is forgiveness. And one, sometimes we do things against ourselves, And sometimes other people have done things to us that hurt us in certain ways. Instead of stuffing that down or saying, oh no, I'm okay. Emotional health is after acknowledgement, practicing forgiveness. So self-forgiveness comes into play when you say, you know what, I did this and none of us are perfect. And it's not about being perfect. It's about having resilience and learning how to, when something does happen, to address it and decide how you want to move forward. And so when forgiving, when you forgive yourself, basically, you just say, you know, I'm sorry for whatever it is that you did, whatever it is that you said. If you were shaming yourself, talking about your body, talking about a decision you made, just beating yourself up, which we often do, just forgive yourself. And then if someone else has been beating up on you or said something or did something that hurt you, you don't necessarily have to address it with them. You can if you want, but you can write what's called a transformational letter. So you can write that letter saying exactly how you feel. And the second letter is forgiving. So you're using their voice and actually saying, you know what? I'm so sorry that I did this for you. I didn't even understand what you were going through. And you're giving yourself an apology. So that is a way to help your emotional health because you're releasing that energy, that resentment, that remorse towards yourself. And now you're releasing that resentment and remorse towards another person. 
So you feel a lot better inside and you're not harboring that negative energy in yourselves. A lot of people believe harboring ne negative energy causes some of the different forms of cancer that we can't even explain. So something that is emotional actually turns to physical in the body when it's not addressed. And science is starting to prove time and time again that this is possible. Uh, one of my favorite books to read on this is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And she just talks about the different emotions that you can have and how they can have and where they can have a physical impact. And the next step is intention. After you've acknowledged it, after you've practiced forgiveness, the next step is intention. And just really have an intention in everything that you're doing, everything that you're saying, and realizing that it's not about immediately being able to get over it. But when you set an intention, you're moving forward in a positive way, saying, you know what, although this happened, this is how I want to move forward. This is how I want to change. This is how I want to be different. This is how I want to address this situation. And once you set your intention, if anything comes in outside of the intention, you're clear and you're able to articulate between yourself and other people exactly how you feel. And then after that comes acceptance. So you've set your attention, you have full acceptance of yourself, your journey. You're not ashamed or embarrassed that maybe you did something wrong, or maybe you allowed someone to do something um, and you didn't address it for a long amount of time. Maybe now is your time. Maybe you just needed to hear this session for you to get the willpower that you need to address this specific situation. So I encourage you today, just a Practice emotional health by acknowledgement, forgiveness, intention, and acceptance. And I guarantee that you will feel a little bit lighter in your life, that you're not harboring anything that you're not ready to address or not wanting to address out of fear. And again, let your fears make you fierce. If you follow me on social media, I'm giving free away free digital copies of my book at this time. All you have to do is click the link in my bio on Instagram and sign up for that um, so that you can enjoy the contents. Um, and I just have, you know, just a little bit of, I guess, energy from the new moon in Gemini. And I want to just express that we might be experiencing dual personality and dual like love and hate and frustration and happiness. And that's very natural for this time. This is a time that we can practice really reflecting and going within and asking ourselves, what lessons are meant for me to learn right now? What am I learning about myself? What am I learning about my family and loved ones? And then practicing these steps of mindfulness to develop a deeper relationship with yourself and a deeper relationship with others. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Koya Webb. I'm a holistic health and wellness coach and author of Let Your Fears Make You Fierce. And you can find me on koyaweb.com. So until next time, love yourself love others, and love the world one day at a time, one breath at a time. Peace and love.